Disby Mosque was identified as a mosque attended by the Manchester suicide bomber Salman Abedi, his father Ramadan and his brother Ismail. Salman Abedi's father Ramadan fought jihad in Libya in 2011 with the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group. The US State Department says they were aligned with Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda and they designated the group a foreign terrorist organisation in 2004. Didsbury Mosque has a long history of inviting and promoting hate speech which it has spread to the Muslim community it represents. Is it a surprise to anyone then that a Libyan suicide bomber who took the lives of 22 people, including children, had attended this mosque? If you preach hate, you promote hate. If you promote hate, you justify hate. If you justify hate, then you give it religious credence and sanction. If hate speech is given religious credence, then it is done through the teachings of the Quran, the Hadith, and the scholars who represent the religion of Islam and its power. Yes, hate speech, intolerance, and the justification of killing non-Muslims is found in Islamic texts. This is the root cause of all the problems Great Britain and the wider world are currently experiencing. And we have been experiencing since the inception of Islam, a totalitarian ideology that has conquest as its foundation stone. I've been to Disby Mosque twice in the last week in an attempt to discuss these issues with their Imam. Both times they've refused. It has been known that Disbury Mosque and its attendees and charitable affiliates have handed out anti-Western propaganda denouncing the West to the local community in Manchester. This is direct from Disbury Mosque. This is a leaflet that I was given on an open day. And this says, living in a society in which people have accepted Western lifestyle as their way of life brings immorality at every step. Modesty, shame and honour have no place in Western civilization. That is direct from <clears throat> Didsbury Mosque. All right. Abu Qatada spoke at Didsbury Mosque. In his sermons, he said it was Islamically lawful to kill the wives and children of apostates who have rejected Islam. People have expressed freedom of religion. He wants to kill their kids. Abu Qatada also issued rulings justifying suicide attacks. Bin Laden, in the image I have of him, that is the image of a Muslim man who defends the causes of his nation against its enemies, should be supported by every Muslim. Do you believe it is permissible for somebody to die in the cause of jihad or a war, even to kill themselves for this? In modern jurisprudence, these are called martyrdom operations. Most scholars agree that they are permissible if they achieve the aims of Muslims by fending off Islam's enemies or if they are to resist invasions. Abdullah Quick is another radical cleric who speaks at the Didsbury Mosque. Because what the homosexuals and the, and, and the pedophiles are doing is so um, disgusting that acts like what uh, Clinton was involved in, they were considered to be regular things. He's called for homosexuals to be killed and for death for those who don't follow Islam. He has a clear fondness and tolerance of the gay community when he states things like the Islamic position for homosexuality is death. Then we have Muhammad Ibn Adam, who speaks at the Didsbury Mosque as well. He has peaceful and tolerant views such as Muslims should not greet non-Muslims with salam. The reason for this is to not show them respect. If a Muslim meets a Jew or a Christian on a pathway, he or she should force them to walk on the other side. It is prohibited to have close friendships and intimacy with non-Muslims. He says Muslims may work in coalition with non-Muslims, but only to ensure the strength and independence of Muslims. Do you see why the Muslim community are failing to integrate yet? This has been propagated in all their mosques. The punishment, he also says, the punishment for extramarital sex is stoning to death. But he is quite considerate. He says a pregnant woman, she can be stoned to death straight after having the baby. It's not permissible to leave Islam. He also says women should not come out of their homes unnecessarily. Where are all the feminists on these issues? Then there's Abu Nayamatullah, another tolerant and peaceful preacher who speaks at the Didsbury Mosque. Uh, and of course they call themselves uh, progressives, right? I mean, at the end of the day, they're liberal, secularist uh, minded Muslims, and they call themselves progressives. Of course, they're regressives, and if this is, uh, uh, if this is progression, then uh, we need the Stone Age, definitely. 
the Stone Age is definitely better for us, for our deen and our dunya. He's a lad who resides in Manchester and obviously has a more localised appreciation of Islam. He says, and I'll quote, Insulting of the Prophet is an act which leads to death penalty, whether the perpetrator is Muslim or non-Muslim. So basically, blasphemy is punishable by death. He supports equal rights for women, though. He's a true feminist, this one. He said that women should not be in the workplace whatsoever. Full stop. He supports for the rights of women to give birth and stay at home, though. So let's go back to Disbury Mosque, or the Manchester Islamic Centre, as they call it, and let's look at the leadership of that mosque. Disbury Mosque leadership are part of the Muslim Brotherhood Hamas apparatus. Its imam and its supervisor of its Sharia department are also officials in the International Muslim Brotherhood Hamas groups led by Sheikh Youssef al Qadari. Anyone with any knowledge of terrorism will know exactly what he stands for and exactly what he promotes. Islamic domination by all means necessary. According to the Global Muslim Brotherhood Watch, a former trustee of the mosque is, n is a known Hamas activist. He was present during a pivotal secret Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas meeting in Philadelphia in 1993 to set up the US branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Anti-Semitic tweets, of course, from another trustee of the mosque, Farzi Hafa, have also been discovered. The content is so ferocious that it would lead any Muslim who trusts his words to believe they are obligated to engage in violent jihad. Quite something when you consider the fact that this man was actually the public relations face of the Disbury Mosque in the aftermath of the Manchester suicide bombings. The audacity of them. The mosque imam personally engaged in violent jihad in Libya in 2011, discussing plans for an attack with militants loading bombs and discussing their upcoming operations. This is their priest. Although don't worry, he's previously claimed he was only out there helping his family to escape the violence, of course. Now let's summarise this. An extremist religious father and his sons worked in and prayed at Disbury Mosque. The mosque itself has allowed extremist preachers who spew their vile intolerance for Christians, Jews and people of the gay community. They've allowed extremist preachers who have encouraged murder in the name of Islam, whether that be for criticism of Islam, apostasy from Islam or furthering the Islamic course in general. The mosque leadership themselves are linked to the likes of Hamas, a prescribed terrorist organisation, the Muslim Brotherhood and terrorist affiliates of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, who have links to Al-Qaeda. The mosque imam is a Mujahideen jihadist. Do you understand how Salman Abadi become indoctrinated into the great evil of our time? They are among us. They want to do us harm. They have plenty of support, and I for one will not accept a Muslim Brotherhood franchise like Didsbury Mosque leadership telling me how love trumps hate.